next song is Jesus Paid It All on 218. And uh, you might have known that, noticed that uh, she has a family with her now. And one of them is gone today, visiting somebody else. If you want to introduce your family, it's not the first time they've been here, but. This is Amariah, and this is Yoma. <laughs> They're yeah. basically inseparable. Uh, you've been watching them for quite some time, but their mother is uh, sick. I won't go into details, but sick. And enough that she's not able to uh, take care of them right now. And her, the dad is having to spend time with the mother, of course. And so you might have them for quite some time, uh, possibly. We, you know, uh, but. Uh, I have people ask me a question sometimes, Don. They say, do you think, let's say you're fill in the blank. You're an elephant. You're an alcoholic. Oh. <laughs> I'll use something yeah. more for later, all right? I, I don't know elephants at all. I've seen a few pink elephants, but that's about it. Uh, so, do you think you're ever going to run out of people you can relate to? I mean, we can fill it. I mean, there's so many things. You're a, father, you're a mother, you're a daughter, you're an aunt. I mean, you're, you're a friend, you're so many things. And uh, I, I'm always amazed when people wonder if they have a ministry. Everybody has a ministry. Yeah, I mean, it's multifaceted. Yeah, you just have one. And if you don't, the Lord will give you one. <laughs> Children are a ministry. Two, and I'm paid one, but 218. <laughs> oh, but you get paid much more. I know, I know. I'm, yeah, I'm still, I'm still <laughs> waiting. <laughs> no, I can be <laughs> Okay, just go look ahead. 
He brought me out. You can throw in the extra word you want or not. It's up to you. Stick welding, it was easy. Gas welding was just 
but it was cool. And I told my dad I'd do this for you in the shop. I put the rear end suspension in myself when he was at work, risking my life with no good equipment. But I said, I will do this for you if I get to drive it when it's done. He said, sure. Well, I didn't know he was going to take it to work all week. So all I chance I had at it was Saturday night. And uh, anyway, that's a different story. But I want you today to be enveloped by this. I want to maybe kill a couple more lights in the back cabin or arm or something. Make sure it's got enough to see. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit. This time in our scriptures, and if you did your readings, um, they did the first few verses before we got to verse 4 and overlapped into this verse. This is the time after the resurrection. This is the time when Jesus was walking and talking and eating and sharing with his disciples. What a great time that would have been. Think about it. I told you this is what I'm going to do. I've gone and broke the gates of hell, and now you can eat and talk and walk with me. If there ever was a time for the disciples to have a light go off in their head, it would have said, I get it. And all the time, we see glimmers of them getting it. But apparently, it took a little more than this. And it says, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised you. The gift, remember? And I want you to know that this very moment in time is from the garden, full scope to this very moment. The restoration of man in harmony with God's heart was the reason for all of that good old Bible you got there. All that foolishness that man went through was to take them to this place so that they could know the Father. Because you realize once you've known Him and you've known, well, the, the, the sorrows of His suffering, but the regeneration of the new birth, it's going to be that way in heaven because He's going to think and you're going to do you're going to do it. You're going to know it's what he wants you. You're going to be in harmony with him. And so he says, wait for the gift my father has promised. And go back through the history if you would like to and just find the times where the Holy Spirit was alluded to, where the Holy Spirit was in the presence. And see, that's, I'm doing this too soon. I got angry, Ray. The nurse that was watching my father-in-law with Kathy down there told Kathy that I won't ever get any better than this. So, so I, I started looking at treadmills and bike skin, and I found a thing online that would do, it's a like a stent you put in your heart, you stick it in your lung. And I saw these people who'd been smoking their whole lives, hanging out in bars, lungs down to nothing with OCP because that's what it was made for. And apparently, if you've treated yourself that way, the problem is the lung doesn't, the air doesn't come back out of your lung. And so they invented this stent that they stick in the deals of your heart. I'm so scientific, ain't I? They stick it in there, it opens up. And the lady called me from the uh, university hospital and she said, well, we've not considered it for your situation for the, oh, it's called ARDS. ARDS is what I have. It's over, my, my immune system over repaired my walls, so it's got scar tissue covering up the good, the good cells. And so we stick these in, and then all of those people can lose the air out of that portion of their lungs that's blocked off like this. And, and she said, I'm sorry, but the US hasn't been approved for use on COVID, but it is a one-way valve, and it sounds like you need the other way valve. I said, well, couldn't you just take the valve out of it? Give me the stent. Give me the breathing tube. She said, no. I said, well, anyway, apparently I didn't make it very far getting that done, but I don't believe him. I just trust in the Lord every day. It says, for John baptized you with water, and in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You go down, and you get wet, and it's a symbolic of your cleansing. And when you come back up, the Holy Spirit is taking care of you. The outside of you and the inside of you is the representation of what took place. So good. You know, you don't know the curse of Leah and Herod Trinity Nazarene. 
we built that gym and couldn't use it for two years because the city couldn't give us a plan for putting an alarm system in it. And the fire department said, you don't need an alarm system in it. And so I had to go and learn how to put an alarm system in there. If it ever goes off, don't call me. I'm retired. <laughs> but finally, we got to use, no kidding, we couldn't play basketball. We had to have a fire marshal stand there and watch us eat a potluck. We couldn't use it. Well, I say that so I can say this. What was I talking about? <laughs> oh, the baptismal tank. We got that tank to use, Angus, and it was just like that. We thought we had all these people, so we got the tank together. We got everything ready. John, remember, we didn't use it. It was like a really big hood ornament on our platform. And now, I hope we can't keep the people out of it. Amen? Amen. I hope that we can. I love it. I love it. John will baptize, and you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now listen. Jesus has been through all he's been through. The disciples saw him go all he's been through. And look at verse 6. And they gathered around him and asked, oh, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Are we going to get our guns back? Are we going to get our swords back? Are we going to get our shields back? Are we going to whoop on the Romans and kick them out of our land and take care of the place like it always should have been? And I imagine G probably Jesus could have said, Oy vey, what is up with you guys? Come on, man. I'm bragging on you saying, you really are getting this, aren't you? You're really starting to understand this. You really are starting, and then they're going, oh, no. We're going to overthrow the government and set up the earthly kingdom by force. And I know that Jesus just, I mean, this is the last thing he's telling them before he goes to be with the Father in heaven. He's got his ascension. I want you to turn the lights off when you go to bed. I want you to feed the cats. I want you to feed the dogs. I want you to be prepared to be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And you want to What? And he said to them, it isn't, he said, to them, you, you silly guys, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. You don't even know how it's going to happen. You don't even know when it's going to happen. And no one knows but the Father. Why are you talking about this? But here's what you need to go, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. He's going to smack you around. I just know it. Holy Spirit's going to lead you into all truth. Not this silly political stuff. He's going to lead you into all truth. You'll receive power when he comes to you, when he comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And in all Judea and Samaria and to Yakima. And to Yakima. I'm sorry for my Christian brothers and friends who think that the kingdom of heaven is like the kingdoms on earth. Here he is leaving, and he's saying, man, I know, it's like when you send your team out, I guess, to, to wrestle. You're going, man, I hope I showed them how to not get their heads ripped off. I hope I showed them. And he's getting ready to go to heaven, and, he, and this is the last thing they say before they go out on the mat. Uh, are we going to get our guns and cannons and knives back? No. No, this is a spiritual war we're in. These are spiritual things we're doing. Did you miss it? I raised Lazarus from the dead. You thought it was about the bread and the loaves. You thought it was about all those things? It wasn't anything to do with those things. He rose again like I rose again. I fed those people the way the Father will feed you. I supplied a, a, a thirst quenching that can't be outdone. And so he gets ready to leave on. I'm sure he's going, man, Holy Spirit's got a lot of work to do. That's what to get your mind opened up. See, I've always said it. If you put God in your box, your religious box, you don't need God. He ain't God if you can put him in a box. You need to allow your minds to be free. You need to be free in your heart. You need to be free in your walk. And so help me the day they start knocking on our door to make us quit preaching the Bible, I will be the first one they haul away, okay? As long as they got to plug in for me at the house, at the jail. Say, got that? 
On the left, well, is that, is that your left? Yeah. That is a medium orange juice at McDonald's. On the right, that's a small orange juice at McDonald's. In the middle are two regular si same size cups. All right, got you thinking? What does that tell you? For eons since man, I, when I was a little boy, I wish I could fly. Man, I got so that when I saw the hawks diving down in the field, I didn't watch the birds any longer. I watched the ground because I knew something was happening. Or how about when you're out on a boat and the eagles come down and snatch that fish right out of the water? And so God made these birds to have an attack form, and this falcon has a shape. Well, wouldn't you know, the B-1 bomber underneath it got the ultimate stealth technology to attack the enemies and not be seen and to go super fast. I wonder where he got the idea. I wonder how they could have got the idea. You see that, Jacob? Sure looked like a bird to me. I'd taken my son down to the fair. What do you want to do? That's his son. <laughs> yeah. I told Kathy last night when we were, I was looking over pictures for Chuck's uh, collage, and I, I should have known something was up when I was this much ahead tall of all of her family at the wedding. And you know that Rigo, I mean, uh, Julio, I was, I, was that, I was bigger. I should have known I was in for it, huh? Can you imagine, in your wildest dreams, is what I'm trying to get you, outside your box. Now, I told you last week, the other week, that before the garden collapsed, before the flood, dinosaurs were really big. And there's a lot of shale and oil out there of leftover dinosaur remains. Those are two femurs from, I forgot the names of them, a Plyoslapteraptor, Avaris, or whatever, on the left, and a a Dolly Walker or Rickerus on the right. Those are their femurs between the knee and the hip on a dinosaur. This is a whole people. Wow. Can you imagine a world like that? Where, where I can imagine the, the uh, spies going into Canaan and going, the grapes were big as basketballs. <laughs> it could have happened. It could have happened. Now this I can't understand. You realize there were a group of guys before us that jumped out of perfectly good airplanes and brown uniforms to land behind the enemy lines and fight their way back to the fight. And when they got done with the war, they came and bought travel trailers. And these bunch got airstreams and they pulled them with jeeps. And I imagine they drank some beer, but they sat around the fire going, I bet you can't take your trailer down that road. I want to tell you, this I cannot do. I think they had to break more rocks out to get it the rest of the way down that trail. I mean, uh, blows your mind. And then I've got some real estate for you. It's only a seasonal flood. It's like once in a lifetime flood. Same house. On the bottom picture, after the hurricane came through, yeah, you don't have to mow the lawn anymore. It's gone. Is that some of you real estate people? Marianna's not here. What do you call that? It's a fixer upper? <laughs> it's okay. <like, wait. laughs> Only needs a lawn and the dirt to put it on. <laughs> and it's the oh no, the, the it's out in the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> Now, when I first dropped off the hill into Biggs, I wasn't ready. I dropped off into Biggs. How many of you have dropped off into Biggs on the hill there at Mary's Hill? You've gone down that hill there, and you looked up. The first time I saw those wind machines, it just, I about wrecked my car. I'm going, oh my goodness, because I've been down it for years, all my life. And all of a sudden, there's this great, big, wind machine sitting up there and all over I looked around and they were all over Kathy and I watched the tornado this week back in Kansas which your mom had been through one you had not been through a tornado 
and neither will you be as long as you're married to me and you stay close. Over here on the right side of the picture are those same wind machines. Same wind machines. See them? There's one, two, three, four, five over here on the corner. And here's God's wind tunnel on the other side. Blow your mind. Blow your mind. Never was more. When I was a young person, they, they recruited basketball players from Washington, D.C. And the, me and the wrestlers were in there one day listening to, I don't know, Fleetwood Mac or something on this radio, you know. And some guys like the top guy there came in and said, we're going to change the station now. And I was a little guy from Moxican. You know, I'm a Moxican. I'm from Moxie. I ain't never seen nobody that big. When I stand up and look at somebody in the bell buckle, I say, well, that'd be fine. <laughs> and I look at the other wrestlers, and they're going, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And, and we sort of got our clothes and got out of there. Blow your mind. We don't even know what big is. You know, we, we go, why did he catch that ball? He should have caught that ball. He's running five times faster than you ever could run, and he's four times bigger than you. Let him drop the ball. Or those, the basketball players, you ever been in the elevator with belt buckles? This, it's incredible. Think about this. Open your minds up. It's crazy. And when you get to thinking about Manifest Destiny, little kid, before Halloween, my first kite in my life, I don't, how can I remember that and not remember where I left my wallet? I got a man on the moon kite. It had a picture of the man on the moon. It was the coolest thing. It was in my room for a long time. At Halloween, my, I, I waited and waited. In October, the wind came up, and I went outside, and I put it up in the air right where the moon was coming up so my kite would be able to talk to the man on the moon. The man on the moon would talk to the man on the moon. And I tied my kite to the neighbor's grape trellis, and I went back in the house and got my little costume on to go over to the neighbor's and, and get some homemade cookies for a trick or treat. And I came out and it was dark and the wind had quit blowing when the sun went down. John, it's awful hard to roll kite string up in the dark. But there was a nice big moon to help me. And I rolled it all the way up there, but it was the man on the moon. Think about it, actual sizes and actual sizes. The moon can seem huge or the moon can seem small, but that's really how big it is. In other words, you can drive across the face of it in uh, three days or worse. Now, if that doesn't blow your mind, there's the United States on Mars with the uh, Great Lakes in the middle of it on Mars. <laughs> so Mars is bunches bigger, bunches bigger. And still, Jesus speaks to Nicodemus, and he says, I tell you the truth, that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Well, how can someone be born when he's old? Nicodemus says, you've got to think outside the box. Surely, they cannot enter into their mother's womb a second time to be born. Jesus answers, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh only gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. The best description of the Holy Spirit you've ever seen. We see him move, we see him go from place to place. You hear the sound, but you really can't tell where he came from and where he's going because he's on the move. So it is with everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus, how can this be? How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher and you don't understand these spiritual things? You know, when we take the spiritual angle out of religion, we've lost the Holy Spirit's direction in our lives. I just thought I'd throw that in. Verily, I, 
very truly tell you, we speak of what we know, we testify to what we have seen, but you people, you people, I got that, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How will you, how will we believe if I speak to you of heavenly things? See, no one has ever gone to heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. I, that's why I don't do a lot of sermons on heaven. Because I'd be lying if I told you I know how it looks. We've got some clues. Uh, streets of gold, pearly gates. Wow. So the guy this morning was doing a research on where you get your pirate folklore, and they said 98% of it is from writers and songs that they wrote about pirates. Some of that's about heaven, too. I gotta know heaven's a great place. I gotta tell you, you gotta go there. I gotta tell you, if it wasn't just not to go into hell. And I said this, this week when I prayed with Chuck, I said, Chuck, I don't know um, much, but I do know this. I said, you've got to have faith in Christ. And you've got to grab that faith when you come up against that wall and drift back. Because he was at that stage where he was going back and forth and he, and he was afraid. You've got to have that faith to hang on to. You've got to. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life. The easiest thing in the world is not to be a Christian. The easiest thing in the world is to ignore him. The easiest thing, in, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump out of the screen. It's so easy for the world to make fun of you as a Christian, to make fun of the spiritual realm. And honestly, if I had experienced the Holy Spirit, I might be discouraged when someone tells me, you're not going to get better. I might discourage when I tell you it's not real. But when you know the Holy Spirit, when you've experienced the Holy Spirit, when He saved you, when He's redeemed you, when He's made all things right in your heart and life, you know Him. And that's how you can go across the country to different churches and walk in the door and know that God is there in His Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that wants to comfort you and direct you and guide you and save you and be everything to you. And the snake, we've never experienced any kind of persecution in this country at all. But even today, there are countries where just saying you're in it, well, coming to church, or saying you're a Christian could cause imminent danger. And it's hard for you in the United States to understand that, but you may get a taste of it. Because they're already trying to take away your ability to speak the truth. They just appointed a truth department in the government under Homeland Security to arrest people that aren't speaking the truth. Hello? In America. In America. Okay? So if this is the truth and we're in trouble for speaking it, I don't care. You see, now we see a reflection as a mirror. We shall see then face to face. Now I know in part. Then I will know fully, even as I am fully known. You see the glass thing? Yeah, the wind blows, and we see the tumbleweeds go, and we see the grass. We don't always have a grip on it. But I can tell you that I have laid hands on people, and I have seen them healed. I've had people I've laid hands on not be healed. And the ones that weren't healed, I don't know that being with Jesus isn't a better thing than some of the stuff that we have to go through. I don't know why the first three doctors who looked at my lungs said, you should be dead, we don't know how to treat you. But I'm still here. I'm not going to quit, because like Scott said, there must be a purpose for it. And if my purpose is to cause you to believe, to strengthen your faith one little bit, so that when you go into this same porthole that we're all going to be confronted with, 
be able to pull out that nugget of faith and say, you don't have to say, I got it right here. I got it right here and you can't stop me. Because it's for God so loved the world that he did this whole thing. This whole thing. He gave his only son that who believes in him shouldn't perish, but have eternal life. He didn't want anyone to die. He didn't. And you know, people that think this is a white man's religion or this is a Protestant religion need to get over themselves. We would have been as lost as lost could be had we not found him out. Had we not cried out for him and he answered our prayers. Because God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I just don't like some of the things that the Bible tells me. Shut up and get in line. Shut up and get in line. This is the way it is. And if you don't want to believe it, there's damnation. But God's trying to lead you on a way that will fill your cup to overflowing. To experience a joy where you can go through hardship and hard time and still have a song in your heart at the end of it all. Because He loves you that much and you know He does. And you know He's coming. See, whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe him stands condemned already because they do not believe in the name of God's one and only Son. It's so critical that we believe and receive his Spirit so that we will understand the things of the Spirit, so that we will be able to be motioned with the wisp of his Spirit, to be able to go and to do some pastors are scared of that in the church. Well, what if they want me to do this or that? Well, if you all pray about it together and it all seems like of God's accord, yeah. And you know what? Here's a scary thing. You may not get to call a pastor first. You may have to do what God lays on your heart right now. Sometimes you may have to do that thing that God wants you to do. Because, you know, if you don't do it, you're going to go through your life regretting the fact that you missed an opportunity because God loves you enough not to let that, not to bug you about it. Not to bug you about it. Do you remember that time when God had you stopping and helping that gal with a burned out battery? Do you remember that time when the lady at the restaurant didn't have enough money to pay for her donut? Do you remember that time and you didn't do nothing about it? You're going to not forget that time. Remember that time when that little orphan kid needed a place? Remember that time when that kid got thrown in the can and no one needed to get him out? Sometime when that widow needed someone to talk to? I just want you to know right now, my wife would only let me talk to unattractive widows, Angus. She, it, that's my marital counseling for you. It's like, I can talk to you. If I come to your house, oh no, now we're stuck, aren't we? <laughs> well, I, I put my foot in there. Romans 1 6, you know why? 1 16. For in the gospel of righteousness of, of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by from to last. First to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Those who are made right by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross will be justified through his Holy Spirit and will live in that faith, will be part of that faith. It's part of your family. It can't be outside your gates. It's through and through, whether your business, your job, whatever you do, you're the righteous will live by faith. I trust in you because you trusted in me, and you didn't want me forsaken. You gave your life for me, not to condemn me. I think that's where we get into trouble sometimes on meddling now. We, we, we think that God's counting all the X and O's and wondering about all the things that you're not doing right. But I think you ought to focus on the things you are doing right. Focus on the things that God is working in your life with. Because if you allow him total control of your life, those things will take care of themselves. 
or he'll have you make them right. Oh, well, I just, I, I'm not consistent. You will be if you follow and seek his wisdom and seek his spirit and stay immersed in the word and stay around God's people and don't miss church. And then I said, don't miss church. Because you need to be the righteous one who he can live through to be his hands, to be his faith, his feet. Faith, 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 faith. Here at Trinity Nazarene, you know, Angus and I have been promoters of this, and I don't know if you guys that are in the course of studies, I didn't go to Bible college because at the time I was leading 20 to 30 people to the Lord a, a year, at least. And then I started doing camps and the number multiplied in my mind as I prayed. I said, God, I can't not do this because the fields are white for harvest. I don't have time to go do this. And so we spent years and years doing that. And, and I was, I, I don't really care. I, I did a lot of young people because they were easier to lead to the Lord. But I found out that you can't just focus on them to avoid the adults because they have parents. <laughs> and they need Jesus too. You see, it used to be in the United States where we could go door to door giving them pamphlets and inviting them to evangelistic meetings. And we could ask and pray with people at the door and they would receive Christ. They weren't heckled and jekyll by everybody else that bangs on their door and harasses them on the phone. They said, wow, it's good to see you people. And we've led people to the Lord just walking down these streets and knocking on their doors. I don't know if that'll work is the same way now, I don't believe, but I think there are ways. We have never done a vacation Bible school here where we didn't increase by a family. At least two. One at least, at two. There are ways that God wants to be that ministry here. Oh, and my point that I was getting to while I rambled. I think that this small church on this corner needs to stay open until Jesus comes back. I think that every little church in the whole place is just as valid as the big sanctuary down the street. Because everyone is a candle blowing in the dark, blowing in the darkness. And people will walk into Trinity, will walk into a small church that won't go in the doorway of a giant place. God bless them. They have their ministry. But you want something done here, you've got to roll your sleeves up and do something. Oh. You want something there, they'll hire it to be done. You see, we're the small church guys. We're the guys you can't extinguish with bug spray. We believe that God wants us to minister. To minister. And I don't care about having an REV in front of my name. I never did. I'll be your pastor. I'll help us in the flock. If we need some water, I'll dig that ditch with you. If we need some more grass, we'll get that grass. Because every church should be, and all you guys are coming in, the licenses, don't ignore. Well, you're doing the course of studies. i got news for you guys. You're probably going to start in a bivocational church. And don't anybody look down on you, because that's what Paul did. He started bivocational, too, in some places where the need was. Because every one of these places is going to have... I don't know, Angus has got all the numbers. He's our number guy. How many millions of dollars have we sent overseas? We've had a missions budget here that we paid every year. And I did a wedding in one of those churches for the alabaster. I thought that was a privilege. I thought those little old boring missionary man things we used to do. And, and they raised the money for me to do a wedding in one of those churches. Amazing. So your job is important. And, and how much more important are you that don't have a place in ministry to be in the church, to be in the sanctuary when the doors open up? Because with your spirit and with the spirit that you carry with you, mingled with our spirit, it's a great thing to God. It's a great thing to God. He said you don't need, you don't need 1,200. You don't need 3,000. I'll take what you give me. And you'll have success with that. Well, you can tell they just send me around Oregon pumping up small churches because I believe in them. I believe in them. 
and I believe in you. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will guide us through no matter what happens. Amen. We'll have dark days. We'll have light days. I want to laugh when the laughing comes. I don't mind if I cry when the crying comes because I don't really care what you think. If that's what happens, that's what happens. Let's stand together and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your spirit and sending you our way to mingle with our hearts and lives. And Lord, if someone here hasn't experienced you, Lord, it's a moment in time where we say, no longer my way, but your way, Lord. Forgive me if there's any sin in my way. Allow me to know you in this special way that only, only the true believer can know you. To be sanctified, to be set aside for service to you, to be guided and directed, not, not necessarily to get a position, but to be blessed with you in control of our lives. And we pray your blessing upon these who are here and those who have made that decision today. If you've done that today, if you've allowed God to take control, lay it down, and God will tell you, and don't rest until you know that you know. Whatever you want to do, you're going to ask Him first. Wherever you want to go, you're going to go because you sense His pressure, His movement of His Spirit, and follow the wind. Father, we thank You for the great things that will come from this body. We thank You for the churches that will stay open. We thank You for Your Spirit. Be with our church. Be with our nation. And Lord, if we need to lead, help us to lead. Direct and guide us all, we pray in Jesus' name. The people said, Amen. Amen.